Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In this video, we'll take a look at a question that I hear asked all the time. What are Power BI data flows? How do they relate to data sets? And when should I use each one? Let's check it out. Today, we're gonna to look at Power BI data flows and how they compare to data sets. If you've worked with data flows at all, you know that you build data flows in Power Query Online and that each Power Query will define a new entity in your data flow. But when you're building your data set in Power BI Desktop, you use Power Query and Desktop to build the tables in your data set. When would you use each one? How do they relate to each other? And how can you use them together to have better success? Let's take a look at this together. Let's dive in. As you can see, the data set is pretty simple. We have two different tables, the relationship between them, when we have uh, some basic information that we've fleshed out here in the semantic model. The key thing to keep in mind for a Power BI data set is that under the hood, the data set is actually an analysis services tabular model that can have uh, a lot of complex logic and semantic information that's built into it through calculated columns, through measures and DAX, uh, and we can build all of these things inside of Power BI Desktop, and it's stored in this optimized, compressed, in-memory uh, engine, uh, that VertiPak engine that gives Power BI its speed. Now, each one of these tables, if we jump over here into the Power Query, Power Query Editor, each one of these tables is defined by a Power Query, this M script that pulls in data from uh, some source, you know, could be SQL Server, could be Salesforce, could be a web API. In this case, the World Bank actually publishes their data as zip files that contain CSV files. So we've got some pretty complex logic in here that unzips the zip file, pulls out the CSVs, and then does the transformations, the typing, the unpivoting, all of the, uh, the cleansing and correction and standardization that we need to get this data ready to work with. Now, this is really awesome and it's relatively straightforward to put together. We can have reports and visuals created based on this data just by working inside of Power BI Desktop. But the question then is, what happens when I need this data in multiple locations? And this is where data flows come in. If I wanted to have this same set of data in a consistent way included in multiple Power BI uh, reports. So different PBIX files created possibly by multiple users here in Power BI Desktop. What I would need to do is I would need to come into my query editor. I would need to copy the uh, code and I would then need to paste it into the other Power BI Desktop files and this means that not only do I have that manual creation process, I also have all of the effort and, and cost of maintaining this moving forward. And in any real world situation, we're going to have drift between these files where over time, one file will have different logic and different data than another. There's real obvious significant drawbacks to this approach. This is where data flows can help. I've jumped over here into a workspace in Power BI where I've created a data flow that has the same two queries represented. Now, we already talked about how a data set in Power BI is an analysis services tabular model. It's memory optimized for analysis. Well, a data flow is physically stored. So the storage behind the scenes are CDM folders. They're folders in the data lake backed or filled with uh, CSV files that contain the data, but they are also defined in the same way. So the way that I created the entities in my data flow was I came in and uh, chose the get data experience, the exact same or very similar experience to what we have uh, for Power Query. I chose blank query and I simply pasted in the M script that we'd copied from Power BI Desktop. So here you can see we've got the same sort of editor, we've got the same code. I'm gonna choose cancel here because I don't need to recreate the same query. But as you can see, I now have the same Power Query preview and editor experience here in the browser in Power Query Online. And I have the same two 
uh, data sets, you know, using this in a loose term, the same two uh, rectangles of data that were defined inside my Power BI data set, but now they're here inside a single Power BI data flow that I can refresh and manage in the service. And this is really where the key comes in. Once these data flows have been defined, or in this case, this one data flow with these two entities, the data is refreshed from the World Bank website on the schedule that I set up, and then it's available for any authorized user to reuse as entities, as tables of data inside Power BI Desktop. Now here, if I jump back into Power BI Desktop, let's say that I didn't want to create these queries inside my data set. I wanted to use them or reuse them. I can simply say, get data. I can choose Power BI data flows from the list of data sources. And in the navigator, in the Power Query navigator in Power BI Desktop, I will see the list of all of the workspaces that contain data flows that I have permission to access. And I can expand out any workspace and any data flow inside it to see all of the entities that are defined inside that data flow. And as we see here, this data flow contains entities for the same climate change data, that same World Bank data, and I can simply select them and either choose to load them as is into my data set. So loading these, uh, instead of loading them directly from the World Bank website, I can load them uh, from the predefined, pre-transformed, and pre-refreshed data flows that are inside the Power BI service. And in addition to this, I could use this as the starting point and I can perform additional transformations that are specific to my workbook or specific to my data set. I can make these transformations here using those data flows as a starting point. So hopefully this has been useful. We've seen that a data set is an analysis services tabular model that is defined using Power Query uh, inside our Power BI desktop file. And we've seen that a data flow is a CDM folder that's defined using Power Query Online in a workspace in the Power BI service. Either one can be used to load in tables of data from a wide variety of data sources, but the key difference, the key thing that you want to think of is anytime that you have a single table or set of tables that will need to be used in multiple contexts, either as is or with additional transformation, you should think about using Power BI data flows as a way to have all of that transformation logic and the refresh schedule defined in one central location so that you can have consistent data in many places without needing to maintain logic in many. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.